Welcome to Oreo Olive with your host Scholars. We discuss random topics for the week. Yes, I know Oreo and olives don't mix, but the abstract thought of putting those two words together enlightened me to create a channel to discuss all kinds of topics weekly. The subject for today is part one of social media and relationships. While there are benefits, um, let's get into the discussion on how communication channels destroyed our interaction with others while we look face down in our mobile devices. We're in a time where it appears social media takes precedence before looking someone in their eye to have a genuine conversation. So the art and love for communication are essential to create a space to share information worldwide, no matter where you are. Click like, listen, and subscribe to this channel so we can talk. Analog conversations. What comes to your mind when you hear that specific phrase? I mean, it's just something that I just came up with, but I'm eager to know your initial thought because I'm pretty sure we may not have the same definition of that. And when I look at that specific terminology that I just put out there, analog conversation, what brings to mind to me is being able to talk to somebody in person as we did as a child without phones. So we're missing that piece of communication. And if you need kind of a visual of what I'm talking about, uh, and I know TV and movies and things of that nature just puts out an idea. It's not necessarily real, but sometimes episodes uh, that they play in sitcoms sort of have a direction in how you would think that families or people would actually be. So for those of you out there who, um, you know, probably born around the 90s um, have looked at all these different kinds of sitcoms that are out there, but looking at sitcoms uh, from, you know, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, which are, you know, aired between the 90 to 96, uh, you know, year. And then um, also looking into like uh, shows like you know, The Living Single, The Wayans Brothers. Uh, you can look at Martin uh, as well. Uh, Family Matters, uh, Hang With Mr. Cooper, you know, all those different shows. And I'm not going to forget A Different World uh, as well, because that was a really good show. But the reason why I bring those uh, shows up is because, can you count across all those shows the number of times that anyone in any one of those shows have picked up a cell phone? What you saw in those shows is what I call a lot of analog conversation. Because when you're looking at, for instance, like the different world or a different world, when they were talking to each other, they communicated. They were standing there. They looked at each other in the face. They talked. But then at times when people need to make a phone call, what do they do in the sitcom? They went and they picked up the pay phone to call home or call a friend or whatever. But everybody always met and actually had a good time and enjoy each other's conversation. Uh, and you can look at the same thing in Family Matters as well. And sometimes or in some of the shows uh, like in Martin, I mean, they did have a cell phone, but you didn't see people just standing there just texting each other uh, through these shows. Um, even though text message was not like popular and the technology was not necessarily there, I wonder, okay, if it was there during that time, would they actually do it? But those shows just kind of give us an insight of how we should kind of get back to, and not to say that we need to totally dismantle um, using phones, but we just need to practice the art of being able to talk to each other because we are so much in the way where when we have a conversation with people, we tend to hold our heads down and we always looking down. We never look at or up because we're so busy texting somebody else that's not actually there while we're having a conversation with somebody that's before us. So if that person leaves, you're going to end up texting them. So we have to get back into that art of being able to communicate with each other in a way where we can have intellectual conversations. And that is something that I miss. I tend to be sure that when I am, when I have my uh, phone, I try to keep it in my pocket to keep it away and really focus and give my undivided attention to the person that I'm talking to. Because it's rude. It's very rude to sit there and talk to someone and you're looking at the top of their head the whole time and it's, if they're not even paying attention to you. And so I think we need to get back 
to that art of being able to talk to each other. So if you want to look at that in more detail, just go take a look at some of those episodes that came out in the 90s. And instead of paying attention to like the words, like sometimes look at the actions of what people are doing. Look at what they're doing behind the scenes. People are talking. We're now in a digital conversation world right now where we communicate with people through social media. But now let's see if we can communicate with people in person. Now, when we're looking into social media to kind of branch off from where we spoke about a few moments ago about analog conversations, now that we're in a digital world, we use social media of some sort and some kind. And when you look at back and how kind of the social media sites started popping up, everything started to compound off of each other. So if you look back, like in 1997, you had a social media site that was called uh, sixdegrees.com and it barely, you know, had over a million users. Then um, the next, you know, a uh, couple of sites that started coming out, one uh, that was very popular among people was hotornot.com. And that basically just showed you a picture of just some random people and you rate that person as being hot or they are not. And the point of that, um, thinking back, uh, doesn't really make sense, but somebody came up with that idea of being able to rate people's pictures of people that they don't know. And so that site kind of gave you two buttons. I believe the buttons were like a green uh, for um, or a, a green or red or something like that. But then when you take that and you switch that over to MySpace, they had over about 25 million users back in 2003. MySpace was uh, actually a little bit where Facebook is like right now. So uh, some of you are out there a little bit uh, too young enough to remember that uh, because MySpace came out before uh, Facebook. Uh, I believe there was a guy named Tom uh, who was your initial friend on everybody's profile. But MySpace was um, MySpace was very open. And I say open because it was so much that went on uh, there. It didn't appear to have any kind of filters on the site. So people posted and said things or anything that they could even imagine. But everybody at that point of time had a MySpace account. Now, this one is very interesting. Um, some of you have never heard of this. Uh, as, and some of you who probably have, that's, that's cool. But there was a site called FaceMash. And FaceMash eventually uh, changed the name to Facebook in 2005. So we're all familiar with Facebook. And there is a kind of a, like a short movie out there about how Facebook started. Uh, you can go out and research that um, on your own. But Facebook has turned not only from a social media account, but it appears to have turned into kind of a new site in a sense, because everybody seems to have a Facebook account. Now, I've had an account on Facebook. I have not been on Facebook in probably like uh, 10 years and I'm fine without it because I don't need it. I have no reason to have it. But eventually I know for, you know, business purposes, you know, you probably going to have to end up uh, going on there to uh, get a Facebook account. And it's perfectly fine. But sometimes we need to look back on the things that we post online because they can come back and hunt you. And sometimes, you know, people post offensive things online um, and it's kind of a two way street here. So we have the right to be able to uh, or freedom of speech. But when you write things online, you have to take into consideration people are going to view that. So people will become offended. So the person has two options. They can you know, click off your page and go to a new one, or they can probably um, comment and then you you all engage into a conversation. Some conversation that people should have in person instead of online, but, you know, it's online, it's out there, whatever you put out there is going to stay out there. But social media can definitely kill relationships. And I'm going to be completely honest with that because it's not social media necessarily it's people because people have to log in to social media in order to engage others 
and not pay attention to the people that's right there beside them. So whether that's, uh, you know, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, wife, aunt, uncle, any family member, any relationship, I'm not just going to put it between, you know, husband and wife or boyfriend and girlfriend, any relationship, your best friends, um, you know, in any kind of relationship where, where uh, two uh, people, whether they're related or not related, are engaging in the conversation. And that right there could definitely kill a person's image because what you post online, people majority of the time are not telling the truth. People are being something they are not. And you have people who are trying to keep up with the Joneses and then the Joneses are trying to keep up with the Trumps. So you have to be sure that whatever you post online, especially images, that they are are, are, are not um, provocative, if that makes any sense. Because some things you just need to keep to yourself. Now, before you post anything online, you have to take into consideration to read it and read it again before you post. Because sometimes the message that you post could affect people that you don't know and could destroy a possible new friendship that you may have with someone. Because when you think about it, if that relationship turns into a marriage, then you have information out there that's online that could destroy that situation. So we have people who are constantly posting things online like this. And then you have people who have this sense of false competition of who they want to see online. So, for instance, uh, like the new thing now is Instagram models. I don't have an Instagram, don't care to have one, but people will go online and pretend to be a online Instagram model. And then that person doesn't look like that person when you actually meet them physically in person, which doesn't make any sense. So it's like you're online gives you the ability to be somebody that you're not. It gives you the opportunity to be a celebrity when you are not. Now, people, you have to be considerate. And if you, constantly tell lies, you're going to have to tell many more lies to keep up with that. And then one of the other things that is very interesting is people are so engrossed in having so many friends. I'm going to say Facebook friends. So people will just add folks based on a picture that they see. So they want to have, let's say, a thousand friends or 600 friends. You don't even talk to that many people. You can't even pull that many people up in your phone. So you're basically just going out there, just creating this false competition because you want to have more friends than the next person that's on your page so that you can feel very important. Just feel important about yourself. Meet friends actually in person that's going to take that relationship to a different level. So maybe you will learn something completely new. Then when you're looking at the numbers, so in order to access these social media sites, of course, you got to have a computer. But majority of the time, people are using their phones. And in the United States alone, people, in the United States alone, there is like, for, for the ages that are, are 12 and up, back in 2009, um, there was only like, uh, like 10 million, you know, smartphones that were out there that people had or people owned during that time. And then, of course, you get around to like about in 2015, there was like about 71 million of phones across the U.S. Um, that were that, that were owned by people who were 12 years and older. And now that number in 2020, even though the year's not over with, is estimated to be about um, uh, 240 million. So that is a big jump of number of smartphone ownership. And just because somebody has a phone doesn't mean they're going to use that for social media, if that makes any sense. And then people, they're not using their phone, they're using tablets. So that ownership of those are estimated to be about 149 million. But now we're starting to see people getting watches because they're checking the social media um, message indicators on their watch. That's supposed to go up to about 48 million um, people who are projected to actually own some type of device like that. So we have 92% of the people have phones, but 89% actually use them and 0% seems to not want to look up when they're around other people. 
Now, let's take a look at potential job opportunities in relation to this whole social media relationship thing. And when we look at this, what I want to focus on is two things. I want to focus on how the postings can kill your success and then how prospective employers search for your online activity. So for some of us out there, you know, we have our social media accounts because we have the right to have one. It's our personal thing. And we feel that employers should not um, should, 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 should not just come out and just start um, running this stuff against us. But what you have to take into consideration is two things. You know, for people out there who are extremely wealthy, like I'm going to say the one percenters, if they post something online and the public doesn't like it, so what? They're wealthy, they're rich, they don't have to depend on anybody, they don't have to depend on a job. Whether people like their posts or not, it's going to blow over in like a day. Life's going to move on. Now, however, if you are an employee, see, there's a difference. The employers can do kind of what they want, but the employees can't just do what you want. You can't just post stuff online and think that you're going to get away with it. Um, now, what you post online, if it's good and it doesn't offend anyone and it's, um, and it's justified, I think you're fine. But if it's negative in a negative way where it's hurting someone or bullying someone or, or if it goes against your character, then yes, our employers are going to take a look at that. But when you look at how employers look at people's like uh, social media like accounts, what they look at um, at least uh, for you know the industry and everything, when they look up the information for that particular person, about 58% of them um, look at the information that supports the qualifications of that person. And that's fine. But upon looking at that, other things are going to pop up because you have to be careful about the content that you put out there. And when you look at that, you have to understand that a person who um, they could have you know, bad mouth somebody else at a previous company. So when you, like, if you work, say if you work at one, at company A and you're moving to company B, if you bad mouth somebody at company A, you go online, you post something negative about company A, then you really can't be upset that company B did not accept you because of what you publicly posted online. So those kind of things is what I'm talking about of being careful what you post because overall, like people are looking at this. So when you post an information out there, it's not going to stop anybody from looking at that information. So you have to be extremely careful because posting will kill your success. Not only can it, it will kill your success if it's negative. So you can't get away. Like you, I wouldn't expect to take somebody seriously if I, if I was hiring them, say if I was an employer and I was hiring them to work for me for a certain role or whatever, and if I go out and I find negative things that this person has constantly posted online, I wouldn't take them seriously. I wouldn't even hire them. Why should, should I? Because that kind of negative energy that you're putting out there, who's to say that you won't bring this in to your employer? So that's that's what you have to, to take a look look at. So you can't just do what you want, when you want, how you want, unless you got it like that. It's going to be very hard for you to justify. So you have to really pay attention um, to that. And I know, well, they can't tell me what to do. Yeah, they can. Nobody can tell you what to do, but people can prevent you from moving on to a prospective employer. As I always heard, you never burn a bridge that you have to cross again. Because people are going to go online on social media. They're going to lie. Sometimes this stuff can be, you know, linked to criminal behavior. Um, sometimes, you know, people just want to just go and see how well rounded this person is. I'm not saying you have to have a picture of a suit and tie on your page. I mean, you can have a picture of you jumping out of a plane um, out of the sky or, or a picture of you, you know, scuba diving in the ocean. I mean, it doesn't matter. But, you know, some pictures just don't need to be posted because employees are going to look at this potential job opportunities. And job opportunities may not be just for um, just for you, like working for someone as an or as an employee. 
This is also for people who who could be self-employed, like small business owners, who could potentially get contracts messed up because of what you posted. Now, with me doing this podcast, I'm not saying anything negative. This is like common knowledge. I mean, this stuff is already out there. I'm not saying anything negative about anybody's business or anything like that. But I'm just stating the fact of that, you know, potential job opportunities. So you don't want to hurt yourself. You really have to watch what you post, period. That's just it. So we're going to follow up back on this. Like, and when we get to episode two, we're going to pull in some people. We're going to talk about it. We're going to see the comparison. We're going to get some outside views of what people think, because a lot of people probably don't think the same way that I do. And that's fine because I'm going to be open to that discussion. The evolution of our experience has allowed us to forget the crucial moments we share with family. Today, we live in a society where people can put technology down and talk with family and friends. Let's focus on how we can bring the art of communication to our relationships and our family mealtimes.